want to talk to you today about something that we all have in common. I think that we all want to find a way to maximize our performance. We want to be our strongest, right? We want to, we want to be our best in whatever it is that we're doing. So I want to share with you a tool that's worked for me and my team. And in fact, it's something that's worked for leaders throughout history. It helps them be their strongest. I'm talking about music, power music. As you can see from my very scientific chart here, power music can have an impact on your performance. So there's actually a ton of science out there that has shown that music can have an impact on your mood, your hormones, and your mindset. Picture Michael Phelps. Every time you see him, he's got these gigantic headphones on. Or he's winning Olympic medals. Research scientists actually proved that certain Eminem songs, if an athlete listens to them before they perform, it makes them feel less tired and more alert. For Michael, his song is Till I Collapse. Music has also been shown to drown out distracting noises, to improve the delivery of oxygen to your body, to increase your motivation. At the 2012 London Olympic Games, an Israeli scientist demanded that music be banned because it created an unfair advantage. Like steroids creates an unfair advantage, right? Not music. But way back before any of this, 25 centuries ago, Plato hypothesized that music could change human behavior that certain musical modes could incite emotional and aggressive behavior. Plato wasn't listening to Beyonce, probably, but I think he was listening to power music. And throughout American military history, we see that music has been important. George Washington, he felt that music was so important to the performance of his troops that he actually threatened to dock pay from his drum and fife majors if they didn't step up their music. I thought my job here at AppNexus was challenging. So let's talk about the science behind all of this. The science has shown us that it's the beat, the bass, and the words. And together, these three elements can have an impact on your nervous system. They can increase your level of testosterone, the hormone that's associated with aggression and risk-taking, something that, as women, we naturally have less of. Another study divided patients into two um, control groups, one that was exposed to music and then a control group that wasn't. And the study actually revealed that the patients who were exposed to music had lower levels of cortisol. Cortisol is, of course, the hormone that's associated with stress levels. And so the patients who listened to music had lower levels of cortisol or less stress. Okay, so when you're in a situation where you have heightened levels of testosterone or a propensity for risk-taking and aggression and lower levels of stress, you actually start to reach your optimal performance zone. You feel less stressed, less nervous, more confident. You can perform at your best. So we know it's the beat, it's the bass, and it's the words. Well, the bass. So bass, low tones, have been associated with feelings of dominance and control. Picture James Earl Jones as Darth Vader. Luke, I am your father. Right? That deep voice just feels dominant. So it's the beat, it's the bass, and then the final part, the words. So the contagion hypothesis tells us that people, when they hear music that expresses power, they start to feel the power. Think of the song, Roar, by Katy Perry. You hear my voice, you hear that sound. Like thunder, I'm gonna shake the ground, because I am the champion. You listen to that song enough, you start to feel like you're the champion. So the beat, the bass, and the words, together, these can have an impact on your performance. I wanna tell you about um, a personal story. A little under four years ago, I was promoted into the job that I have today as general counsel here at AppNexus. And it was a big promotion for me. Our CEO, who was up here talking to you earlier today, took a chance on me. 
I was early in my career for the job. I went from being a peer to a manager overnight. How many of you have ever gone through that change? It's terrible. It's one of the hardest things you'll ever do. It was so challenging, as though it wasn't already challenging enough to become the GC at one of the fastest growing tech companies in New York. Do you know what I did? I started listening to Girl on Fire every single morning. My six-year-old daughter and I, who's here listening to me today, she swung by after school, we would play it in our kitchen, and we would literally belt it out at the top of our lungs. And pretty soon, I started to feel it. I would drop her off at school on 15th Street and walk up 6th Avenue with my earbuds in my ear, listening to Girl on Fire, just turning it up, turning it up, turning it up, making it louder. And pretty soon, I felt like I had two feet on the ground, I was burning it down, I was on fire. And you know what? I was not backing down. And the music started to have an impact on me. It changed my mindset and it changed my performance. And so I ask you, what's your power song? And the next time before you take the field, if you took just two minutes to listen to your power song, how could you change your own outcome? I challenge you to try it. It's simple. And when you do it, turn it up.